Sort the Court. It's a game you've probably heard of before. It's one of the most video games of all time. It's been played by people like Markiplier and other YouTubers, but to my knowledge, it has never been played by an AI. So, in this video, we'll have an artificial intelligence play this game to see how it fares. In Sort the Court, when presented with a request, you must decide either yes or no to a given prompt. Your goal is to expand your kingdom by saying yes to good things and no to bad things. To get an artificial intelligence to play this game, we'll need two things, an OCR system and a sentiment analysis neural network. But what is OCR and sentiment analysis? OCR stands for Optical Character Recognition. It serves the purpose of reading text from images. For our OCR system, we choose to use Tesseract, since Microsoft Transformer-based OCR doesn't work good for this purpose. Likewise, a sentiment analysis system is used to determine the sentiment of a text, whether it has a positive or negative connotation. Basically, whether a text is saying good things or bad things. For this, we choose to use Roberta for sentiment analysis as it achieves strong performance in this task. To play this game, our AI will take a screenshot every second, find the text in that screenshot, and press Y if it thinks the text is good, and end if it thinks the text is bad. Since we're using a sentiment analysis system and not a question answering system, our AI will only make decisions based on the connotation of the text itself. This is important to remember for later. In the first game we have our AI play, our AI gets off to a good start. It makes good decisions, but then a dragon eats everyone. And a demon finishes it off. Not exactly what we wanted to happen. In this run, I did notice a problem though. As it was only considering the sentiment of the text the characters were saying, it was saying no to good solutions to bad problems. Mm -hmm. If a character had a really negative problem, the AI would almost always simply say no to any solution proposed. This was bad. So, in my next run, I had the AI only consider the last sentence of what the characters were saying, which is normally the solution they are proposing to their problem. This run went a little bit better. The AI was surviving, but not thriving. It did the bare minimum to stay alive without growing considerably in any one metric, before slowly dying out. This was kind of good, but it's still not the result I wanted, so I decided to give it another go, this time giving the AI the character's text as well as their names, expanding the information they had available to them similar to the first run. In this run, the artificial intelligence did an incredible job. It got attacked by the dragon, but it managed to stabilize its economy. But not only that, it actually managed to complete the Dragon Sword quest to get revenge. Not bad decision making so far. Its kingdom eventually reached a peak population of 985 people, and a peak happiness of around 250. It was doing a lot better than a lot of players, but unfortunately, it began to falter. You see, the thing is, in this game, there are a number of storylines. After a storyline is complete, a lot of the characters simply leave the game, meaning they'll never ask for another request again. One of the main storylines is to join the Council of Crowns. To do this, you have to make very specific decisions. Unfortunately, our AI failed in this regard as it declined joining the Council as the dialogue was too negative for its liking and things only got worse from there. Mm -mm. The artificial intelligence tended to always say yes to certain characters' requests, but also always say no to certain others. Meaning, after a while, it completed all the positive storylines, but it was always locked out of the ones it thought were too negative. As the AI doesn't adapt or learn while playing, it always made the same decision, given the same prompts. In the end, it completed the scientist's quests, Albert's quest, and the quest for the dragon sword, 
but it eventually ran out of things to do, as all the good characters had simply left the story. The remaining requests would always result in a firm no, meaning it could no longer progress in the game. This led to a slow and painful downward spiral before the AI finally lost the game at day 99. Watching the footage back, the AI always said no to the gesture after a certain point. Mulder, Skelly, Yet Yet, both cats, the fisherman, Sneaky Girl, and Winston the Slime. It would also always say no to progressing the Gardener's story. In the late game, this made up most of the remaining characters. However, it would always say yes to the vampire, the wizard, and the ghost. But this was not a good thing, as these choices resulted in a decrease in happiness which eventually cost the AI the game through a random chance. In the end, our AI was simply not optimized to make good choices. The sentiment of the text usually aligned well with the correct decision, but not always. To do better, we would have to specifically fine-tune our model for the types of questions being asked. A model specifically fine-tuned for yes and no decision making would have probably worked a lot better, but I feel a sentiment analysis system, although not optimal for this task, did a good job for the purposes of this video. If you want to see more interesting machine learning content, please remember to like and subscribe.